All right, so today with us we have the 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe High Country. This is the all new redesigned Tahoe. Um, they did come out roughly last year, so I'm a little late making this video, but this being the High Country, this is technically higher than the Premier. Um, it has the bigger 6.2 liter. It's This one that we have in front of us is fully loaded. The re really the only thing that's missing off of it is the rear seat media, but other than that, it is fully loaded and it has everything on it. And today, of course, I am at Art Main Chevrolet here in Jackson. So if you are in the market for a new or used Chevrolet vehicle, please feel free to check them out. They are right off of exit 141 off of I-94. All right, so starting off with the key fob as usual. It is the newer design Chevrolet key. You do have the on the back of the key, the Chevrolet emblem, of course. And on the face of the key, you have six buttons. You have unlock and lock, remote start. This button right here releases your uh, lift gate. This button right here releases the glass portion of the lift gate, and then this button, of course, is the panic alarm. And of course, there is a physical key on the inside here. It is laser cut, so if the battery on the vehicle dies or on the key fob, you can still gain access to the vehicle. So in order to utilize remote start, you first have to lock the vehicle and double click the circular button. And when the vehicle starts up, you can see our LED DRLs do come on. DRL stands for daytime running light. They aren't actually flickering in person. That's just the frame rate of the camera. And it's a little bit hard to tell due to the sunlight, but these are the daytime running lights for the rear tail light. These do come on as well. They are LED. And then in order to shut the vehicle off, you just double click the same button again and the vehicle does shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the exterior lighting of the vehicle and we will take a good look at the outside. Alright, so taking a look at the front fascia here starting off, the daytime running light does act as your turning signal. And then coming up top you do have a tri-bulb setup, they are LED, so these two bulbs on the outside are your headlights and then this bulb right here is your high beam, I will go ahead and turn that on. And those are your high beams right there. Fog lights are unfortunately not available on the Tahoe, however they are the only vehicle that does offer fog lights on the GM Trio, so the Tahoe Yukon and Escalade is the Yukon. Um, Tahoe High Country is very similar, uh, very comparable to the Yukon Denali. Not quite Escalade, even though they ride on the same platform because the Escalade had it. If you take a look at the interior and stuff, it's totally different, but you could say this is very reminiscent to the Yukon Denali. And then of course, same setup right here. And you do have front parking sensors along the front bumper camera right here for your 360 surround vision and take a look at the inside or the grill you do have the front face right here the grill is um, aluminum with the high country that is embroidered into the metal itself but you do have this bronze inserting here on in the grill as well and I do apologize for the wind and the Tahoe that we're taking a look at today is finished in iridescent pearl tricoat side marker lights right here and then you do have real air dams right here as well and taking a look at our wheels these wheels are exclusive to the high country trim these are 22 inch wheels you can get a range of 18 or you can range from 18 inch wheels to 22 inch wheels And on both sides of the vehicle, you do have High Country stamped on each side with the Tahoe name as well stamped on each front door. Turning signal right here on the side mirror, it is LED. These are heated mirrors, power folding, and you do have blind spot monitoring on the sides as well. The driver's side is auto dimming. And on both mirrors, you do have a camera for the 360 degree surround vision camera. And also I'd like to mention too, um, oh wait, no, this camera does that as well. Um, for the 360 view, you will See, once we go inside, there's actually a curbside view for each side. And then the back, there is rear tinted glass as well, with chrome that goes throughout the entire door sill, but up top, this is black, and then black for the pillars. And you do have chrome roof rails up top. And so coming to the rear setup of the taillights, these are LED, the daytime running lights, but each individual component of the taillight is an incandescent bulb. And you do have rear parking sensors as well. 
And this is the cover for your tow hitch. I will have the towing capacities in the annotations, of course. And the quad exhaust as well. Now this Tahoe having the 6.2 liter V8, it does recommend 91 octane. However, it is not required, it's just a recommendation. But if you opt for the 5.3 liter, 87 octane is what you need. It is a capless design as well. And you do have your shark fin antenna up top as well, and you do have a full panoramic sunroof inside as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that 6.2 liter V8. All right, so on every trim level besides the high country of the Tahoe and Suburban, you are going to have a standard 5.3 liter naturally aspirated V8. That engine is going to produce a good 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. That is going to be routed through a 10-speed automatic transmission. But what we have here in the high country, we have the bigger 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. This engine produces a really good 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Now you can also opt for a 3 liter turbo diesel Duramax inline 6 cylinder engine. That is going to produce 277 horsepower, but the same 460 pound-feet of torque that we have here in this 6.2. This 6.2 liter is going to be routed through a 10-speed automatic as well, and so is that 3 liter turbo diesel Duramax. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock the vehicle. Now, the doors are locked, of course. So on all four doors, you can see we do have passive entry buttons. So pressing the button once will unlock the driver's door and pressing it a second time will unlock all four of the doors. But of course, pressing it again will lock the doors. Now if you press the button from any other door besides the driver's door, it will unlock all four doors. So only pressing the button from the driver's door unlocks just the driver's door. Now when I open the door, you will notice we do have the optional power deploying running boards. They are illuminated as well, but that's only for nighttime. And taking a look in the interior, it is just a very well laid out interior. So the interior color that we have here today is jet black and mocha, but you can option just a standard jet black interior. So this is going to be your 10-way power adjusting driver's seat with 4-way adjustable lumbar and recline. And taking a look at the leather, you can see we do have this very unique sort of like zebra design with the piping that goes throughout the seat with the white stitching. And on the front two headrests, we do have high country that is embroidered. So shutting the door, it sounds very solid, of course, this being a Tahoe and having big, heavy doors. So in order to start the vehicle, you just have to make sure that the key fob is inside the vehicle. It is located in my pocket. Depress the brake pedal and push the button to start the vehicle. All right. 
so I'm going to go ahead and start from left to right. Um, if I miss something, I may go back to it, so it may not be, you know, as professional as I can make it, but I'll try my hardest. So starting right here, we do, of course, have our power door locks and the accent, the chrome accent that goes throughout the door handle and the door handle itself. And coming up here, we do have our power mirror controls right here, and this button right here will lock out the rear windows. And then this button right here will actually power fold in your side mirrors. So if you need to park in a tight parking spot and you don't want people knocking your mirrors off, you can do so, but these mirrors are absolutely massive, so I don't see anyone doing that. But right here, these are your power window switches. All four of them are automatic down, but only the front two windows are auto up. And if you take a look here, you can see the glass is actually thickened and it is dual pane acoustic laminated. So that helps for noise cancellation and isolation so it isn't as loud in the cabin. And right here we do have two person memory seating, so like a husband and wife setup. So if husband and wife borrows the car, they can adjust their seat, power steering wheel and side mirrors to the memory. And you do have an exit feature here as well with a little area right here to store change or whatnot or just a little grip handle. And the entire door itself is this mocha colored leather with the white stitching and you also do have this deep wood accenting right here as well. I just think it looks really, really good. And that same mocha leather comes throughout the entire dashboard, right down underneath the screen and just throughout. And I'd say probably 90% of this entire dashboard is soft stitched leather. So I think it looks and feels really, really good. And Pressing this button right here engages your electronic parking brake and in order to disengage it, apply the brake pedal and press it again. This turns traction control on and off. And then this right here is your lane keeping assist feature. What lane keeping assist is, if the vehicle begins to depart its lane or start to drift over the lane line, the computer will try to nudge the steering wheel back into your lane so you do not you know, side swipe somebody. Park assist on and off, so this turns your parking sensors on and off. And hill descent control, so if you don't want to keep pressing your brake pedal to slow down on a hill, just use the hill descent control and it will mitigate a speed for you. This button turns auto start stop on and off. So what auto start stop is, when you come to a stop sign or a stoplight and you come to a complete stop, the engine will actually turn off to conserve fuel. And then this right here, turns the outlet in the rear cargo area on and off as well. And then these are your controls right here for your heads up display. This has a 15 inch heads up display. I apologize for the uh, bird excrement on the windshield, uh, but I can't really do anything about that. So you can brighten the heads up display. That's as bright as it goes, but on camera it doesn't uh, seem to have changed. And you can also adjust where it goes in the windshield. And you can scroll through the different information it can show, like the um, what you have four-wheel drive setting, the pitch and angle of the vehicle, speed. This shows the distance of the vehicle in front of you for the Ford Collision Alert. So it just shows through a different array of settings. And then right here is your trailer braking control. So this controls the gain. And then this controls the dimming of the gauges, headlight controls, so auto, parking, and headlight. And then you can turn it off and just leave it on auto. Four wheel drive selection right here, so you have auto. So what auto is, since it'll be in rear wheel drive, but the rear wheels begin to slip, it will shoot power to the front. Four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low, and two high. And the only way you can um, engage four low is you have to shift the vehicle into neutral, shift the four low, and then you can actually, um, right now too, for the air ride suspension, the maximum ground clearance is locked. You have to be in four low to engage it. But this rotary dial changes the modes. So you have normal, sport, off-road, and tow haul. And then pushing this button right here will turn the settings for the air ride suspension. So you have entry exit ground clearance. So it is currently lowering the vehicle I'm not quite sure if you can tell on video or not if it's lowering, but you have, oops, that's the modes. You could select increase ground, or ground clearance, and I'll see if the camera will pick up us raising in the air. I don't think it is. Oh, yep, I can feel it. 
So this is increasing the or increasing the ground clearance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shift the vehicle into four wheel drive low. So in order to do that, shift the neutral, press four low. It is shifting to four low. and it deactivates your collision sensor, trash control, stability track, and then you hit the suspension button and you can select maximum ground clearance. And I'll go ahead and actually step outside of the vehicle and show you the different air ride settings. So, shift in the park and I'll show you. All right, so this is the maximum ground clearance. As you can see, uh, this is a very high vehicle. It's actually lowering the suspension right now uh, a little bit, but I'll go ahead and put it on entry, entry and exit ground clearance and show you just how drastic of a difference it is. And this is the entry exit setting for the suspension. So you could see now it is very low to the ground. And right here, this is the normal setting right here for the air ride suspension. So this is what you'd be driving on. Down below, hood release right there. And this is the control for your power adjusting steering wheel. It does tilt and telescope. And coming to the left of the steering wheel, we do have our turning signals, our wipers, auto wiper, and then the end. These are the rear wiper controls. Or actually right here, this is the rear wiper controls. This is for the mist. And of course, pulling it toward you turns on the high beams, and then pushing it away from you does turn on the high beams as well when the headlights are on. There's nothing to the right of the wheel because all the wiper controls are on this stock. Um, but right here, we do have our cruise control, and then this button adjusts the forward collision alert gap. Um, this also does adjust the adaptive cruise control settings as well, and the heated steering wheel button right here. And then on this side of the wheel, we do have our hands-free calling with Bluetooth, and then this goes through the huge eight inch screen right here. Um, this is the upgraded gauge cluster. However, there is a more, uh, it's not more basic, but it's just the standard gauge cluster that you can get on the lower end trims. So this has the bigger screen. So home, it shows the speed, speed limit, and range information. So you can scroll down and see miles per gallon, oil life, tire pressure, timer, following distance in seconds, driver assistance, engine hours. Scrolling up, that actually shows the pitch of the vehicle and if you're in four high, four low, or auto. Whatever you're listening to, the navigation, Bluetooth, and then a array of different settings that you can change. And the steering wheel itself is leather wrapped and it's a four spoke design and you do have the bronze accenting that goes throughout the steering wheel and you have your airbag and your horn. That is your engine start stop button right here and this is your precision shift shifter right here. So no more column shifter, it's a push and pull selection. Um, so right now we're in park to go into drive, to press the brake pedal and pull the D. And to go into reverse, pull the R and you do have a 360 degree surround vision as I mentioned when I was walking outside the vehicle. So bird's eye view, this is behind us and this shows what's in front of us. This magnifies the view and it shows um, the bumper view for the front and the rear. The curb side cameras as I showed as well. So you can see when I turn the steering wheel, the tires do show and this shows behind us. Trailer hitch camera. And you do have a, uh, if you have a trailer connected, that can actually show a transparent trailer view so you can see what's behind the trailer. And then shifting in a drive, if you press the L that goes in a low gear, L1, L2, L3. This isn't really meant to be used as a manual mode, it's to show, um, so if I put it in L5, we're still sitting in first gear, but it's telling the transmission not to shift over fifth gear. Pushing in for neutral and pushing the P for park. And coming right here, this is the 10.2 inch infotainment three screen display. 
So if I select audio, we do have um, different array of AM, FM, and XM, and your presets, phone, navigation, Wi-Fi, hotspot, users, and settings, selecting on settings, uh, an array of different things like teen driver, the suspension, and seating position, valet mode, lighting, power door locks, remote lock, unlock, ride height, and comfort convenience, applications, you do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, these are wireless for the 2021 model, applications, audio and climate, Sirius XM, phone, navigation, my Chevrolet and climate, and systems, you do have time, date, language, phones, Wi-Fi network, and Wi-Fi hotspot, this vehicle does have a hotspot, displays, sounds, voice, device for my access, and private or privacy, Users, so you can program a specific user profile to the vehicle. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto right there. Trailering, applications, and OnStar services. You do have OnStar up top here as well. Climate, you can control it through the screen. This has a tri-zone climate control. So up here is the dual zone, and then you have a zone in the rear. This shows your cameras. My Chevrolet, Sirius XM, and Marketplace. And coming down below, we do have the uh, physical button controls for the radio, and again, the dual zone climate up front. So this is to adjust the driver's temperature and passenger temperature. You can select auto. Pressing sync syncs the temperature to the driver's temperature. Rear climate on and off. You can turn climate on and off for the rear. You can lock out the rear climate as well. And these buttons right here, turn on the tri-stage heated seats this heats up the back and bottom portion this just heats up the back portion and tries or tri-stage ventilated seats as well and then you have the same setup for the passenger side as well and then you do have uh, different zones right here with circulation you do have your um, rear defrost and maximum front defrost and then this controls the fan speed right here And then down below we do have an SD card reader, USB type C and type A, and a cigarette lighter right here as well, wireless phone charger. And we do have the chrome accents on the cup holders right here on the front. And these right here, the side portions of the center console are actually stitched leather which I really like. And then on either side you do have storage too. And coming to the center console, it is stitched leather as well, that same mocha colored leather. This is not the wireless charging pad, that's what that is. This used to be where it was though in the previous generation. And opening it up, we do have a decent amount of room in here, but not as big as you'd get in other Tahoes and Yukons, and here is why. So when I close it, there's actually a button up here, and when I press the button one way, you have a optional power sliding center console. And when it is fully back, the rear passengers do have more access to the cup holders back here. And you have a little tray right here as well, so you can hide stuff that you don't want the valet driver to get. And pressing that same button in the other direction will, of course, move the center console back to its regular position. Coming right here to the rear view mirror, as you can see, it is just a regular rear view mirror, but when there is a toggle, or there is a toggle back here, but it isn't to dim the mirror. When you flip it backwards, it transitions to an augmented reality camera, so you can adjust the brightness of it, the different zoom, and the pitch of the camera as well. And then flipping the toggle back transitions it to a regular mirror so it will show a totally unobstructed view of what's behind you if you have passengers and luggage and you can't see out the rear that well again on star up top here and this is the passenger airbag lighting letting you know if it's on and off and then these are the controls for your fully panoramic sunroof so that opens the shade and then you have the slide and tilt button so of course sliding it slides it all the way back to let a good amount of light and sun inside. And pressing tilt will of course tilt it to let a little crack of air in. And then the center button right here opens and shuts the shade.
All right, so our lights in here are fully LED. And so right here, this is the control for the power lift gate. So you have maximum, three quarters, and then this turns it off. And pressing the button will open and close the lift gate. These buttons right here will actually fold the third row seats and raise them as well. All right, that didn't work as planned. All right, there we go. Um, I guess that seat's too far backwards, but you get the picture. I'm pressing the button again, the other direction, we'll raise them. Try and see if it worked this time because the headrest is down. Yep. I'll get it when I get back there. But um, yeah, so you can control the seats from back here. So if you have people that need to put stuff back there and you don't want to get out, you can fold them and raise them. And then this turns the LED illumination on and off when you open and shut the doors. And you have three garage link right here. You do, have, of course, have your visor with the vanity mirror and lighting. And they do detach and slide. And you have Bluetooth microphones mounted throughout the cabin as well. And then coming on this side right here. Um, so the there is no sunglass container right here this is actually what this is for and it has a very good amount of room in here um you don't just have to use it for sunglasses you can put you know pens or whatever you need in there and of course the hazards right there and you have the same silver uh and chrome accent that goes throughout the entire screen right here this entire portion all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the rear seating area of the Tahoe. You have that same mocha colored stitch leather right here that comes throughout the entire door, power window switch, and power door lights back here. It's more storage down below and right here as well with a grip. And you do have a handle located right here on the B-pillar to gain access easier. And shutting the rear doors, they do shut again with nice solidity. Um, very nice, satisfying thunk. And me being an average 5 feet 10 inches tall, I do have a really nice, probably 5 inches of room behind the seats, 5, 5 and a half inches. And when you open... I'm gonna open the door to show you, but you actually have two levers right here. This one will actually slide the seat forward and backwards up to five and a half inches. And then this one will actually tumble the seat so you can gain access to the third row. So pulling this one slides back and forth. And then I'll go ahead and hop out to show you this one. So once, twice, and you can gain access to the third row a bit easier. So right here, we do have our climate control settings, tri-stage heated seats for the rear as well. Your different fan speeds, turning the fan speed all the way down turns the climate off. Automatic and your different modes for where the fan is going to blow the air. Two USB type A's as well as a household outlet back here, a 110 outlet volt and different temperature adjustments. Now, what I mentioned when I was outside, I believe I mentioned this, um, we are missing the optional rear seat media screen with navigation uh, package that would include two 12.6 inch rear screens and that would also include um, navigation but with the screens you can stream you know of course movies you can actually plug in a gaming system like a playstation xbox or whatever and you can play that back here because this vehicle does have a wi-fi hotspot now I'm going to go ahead and slide the center console backwards so you can see just how far back it slides for the second row so I open the sunroof shade as well, but this is the center console slid all the way back and you can see just how far back it goes. Easy access for your drinks. So I think it's very cool how it slides back. The only thing though, again, when I was up there, when you have a power sliding center console, you do lose a little bit of room for the center console, but you have that same tray or the tray underneath that you can pull out. All right, so climbing into the third row here, um, I have to say, wow. With this new independent rear suspension, your knees are no longer in your chest. Um, you can really just sit back com or comfortably back here. I mean, if you're six feet, six one, six two, 
even with like because the head uh headliner right here is actually cut out so you can fit a taller individual back here and like if you're six one six two you can easily fit comfortably back here and i'm you know i'm only five ten um and i fit really good back here but you do have cup holders on either side storage and usb type a and to fit a uh, third passenger right here, you do have a seatbelt that comes from the roof of the vehicle. Two adults would fit comfortably back here. I wouldn't try three, but uh, three children would easily fit back here, no problems. Or smaller adults. And you do have air vents, of course, throughout the headliner and more LED illumination. So overall, the rear seat of the Tahoe, it's definitely a great place to be. Very comfortable and luxurious. All right, so the key fob is with me. I'm gonna go ahead and place it inside my pocket here, and I'm gonna go ahead and zip it up to show you that I do not have the key. This does have a hands-free lift gate, so you just kick your foot right there. At nighttime, there would be a Chevy emblem that projects on the ground. You could see it, so you knew where to kick, but it comes all the way up. This is a programmable lift gate as well, so if you have a lower garage, you don't have to worry about it hitting the roof of your garage. And with that new independent rear suspension, you get a plethora more room back here. And underneath here, more storage as well, but your spare tire is located underneath the vehicle itself. But you do have a, another 110 volt outlet back here, a household outlet. And these buttons right here, power fold the second and third row seating. So that has a completely flat load floor, and it is just a great amount of room. Of course, I will have all of the uh, storage and space in the annotations but you can of course raise the third row but the second row you'll have to raise by hand and in order to shut the lift gate you can use any previous method I mentioned um, with the button inside button on the key fob and whatnot or the button the button right there All right, and so um, you can open up the rear glass with this button right here. And opening that up does expose your third wiper, which is located right there. And so if you just have like a bag or something that you want to toss back here, you can do so without opening up the entire lift gate. All right, so coming to the passenger side, we have, again, more storage in the doors and storage right here in that same leather that comes across in the deep wood power door locks and the same chrome that goes throughout the door handle accents or the accents around the door handle and the door handle itself and the passenger side too is the other window that's auto up you also have high country right here that is uh, stamped in the door sills and two this is a 10-way power adjusting seat with four-way lumbar and recline And you have a handle right here on the A pillar so you can gain at, or gain entry a bit easier. This vehicle does have a 10 speaker premium Bose audio system. However, a nine speaker system is standard. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my seat to how I would sit comfortably. And yeah, uh, very comfortable seats. The seats are very soft and supportive. You do have a lockable glove box that is damped and a really good amount of room in here, of course, for it being a very large family SUV. You do have the same setup over here. And throughout the cabin as well, you do have grip handles as well. So overall, a really, really nice SUV. This is definitely a luxury SUV for sure. Um, so we will go ahead and take a look at the window sticker. So there is dirt on the vehicle, so I apologize for that, but, um, miles per gallon, it being a 6.2, you use 6.2 gallons every 100 miles, average, 14 miles per gallon city, 19 highway, and 16 combined. Um, you know, of course this being a... 6,000 pound box that has to push through the atmosphere of course you're not going to expect premium fuel mileage but uh, you buying this vehicle you shouldn't expect that but standard vehicle price is 72.6 but with all the options that this one has it stickers at eighty thousand three hundred and forty five dollars 
So 2021 Tahoe four wheel drive high country. All right, so let's go and shut the vehicle off. There goes the rear seat reminder going into play. So that lets you know you have a child or a bag in the back seat and you don't want to forget that. All right, well, if you have made it this far into the video, I'm just gonna assume that you found this video enjoyable and probably informative. So if you have, I ask that you consider liking and or subscribing. And thank you for watching.